Today, I wanna to try and help you guys out. And Duncan's gonna help David out by teaching you how to choose a rod. First, I need to know what type of fish I'm gonna go for and then I work backwards from there. David here, as an example, needs a rod that can catch massive GT off the rocks in Oman because he's coming with us to Oman later this year. What reel do you have? Expedition uh, 8000. He knows he's going for massive GT. He has the biggest <laughs> size Daiwa reel, which is the 8000 Expo. Is that brand new? It is, it's brand new. <laughs> Unfished. Un he has a brand new expedition. Unfished. And that's <laughs> about to get a brand new Rodney. He's come to Fishhead on the Gold Coast, all the way from Germany to Fishhead. That's the only reason he came to Australia, is he just wanted to buy a rod. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the only reason. He is in very good hands with Duncan here because Duncan knows his gear and he knows GT fishing. Okay, so first question, yeah. obviously, was what are you trying to catch? So we've established that. GTs. Big GTs, and maybe. <laughs> basically, yeah, big GTs. Yeah. Second question is always going to be what lures do you see yourself using? Some people want to throw big poppers especially. Yeah. Typically, you're looking at stiffer tip rods for big poppers. Some people want a rod that's going to do everything so you yeah. have a bit of a compromise between okay. stiffness for your poppers and softer stuff for your stick baits and then other people want a full-on stick bait rod what kind of lures and what weight of lures you want to throw is the, the next question we already know you've got a stick bait rod i got the stick bait rod but it's um, not so heavy that it can um, handle i think the big lures and the big stick baits yes it's uh, made for 150 gram stick baits maximum yeah, so you've got your middle size stick baits all the covered. The middle size. So what we're looking for is something that's going to do decent sized poppers. Yeah. And then some of your large stick baits yeah. as well. How heavy are you? Uh, 80. 80 kilo. kilo. He's 80 kilos, I'm 65 kilos. And I know that the heaviest sticks are way too full on for me. I go flying basically. I hook a fish, tighten up and it's like, it pumps me. I can't really handle that because I'm a bit lighter, but at 80 kilos, and if you know you want yeah. a proper stick then <laughs> yeah. he's going to go for something much heavier everything's going to be a bit of a compromise somewhere the best fish yes. fighting rod might not be the best casting rod the best one for working big poppers is not always the most comfortable rod all day long so <laughs> yeah, okay. there's always something we've already cut out by saying gts we, we cut out 90 percent of the rods that exist <laughs> <laughs> cutting down big gts then we've got another half that number again and now we're looking towards the poppers larger stick baits we're really starting to home in on you know a handful of really good rods to to bend up and try out out of all of your rods just off the top of your head how many are you even going to consider in that because you've got like you got a bunch of different GT rods here, but yeah, so what are we down to? Is probably like 20 two? something GT rods here and we're down yeah. to probably four rods. Four rods, which is great. Yeah. That's what you want. From a point of view of trying to decide over stuff, generally if you show people more than three or four rods in one go. It's too confusing anyway. It's too confusing, yeah. yeah. So you've got to try and eliminate as much as you can as quickly as possible and yeah, yeah it just makes more sense for people. I guess the ultimate thing here is you're about to feel four different rods. A big part of that is which one you like the feeling yeah. of because the they're all going to do yes. the job yeah. but if you hate the feeling of one even if duncan says that's the best one you're not going to get it because you no. don't want to use something <laughs> yeah. you hate you want you want something you love casting. yeah at the end of the day you want to have the rod that you pick up and use again and again and cast it for hours because that's what you're going to do yeah <laughs> just because the guy in the shop says this is the best rod doesn't necessarily mean that's what's going to work best for you well let's hit it then big rod testing cool. okay what brands are you actually grabbing here we've got FCL Labo, yep, and uh, Zenac stuff. Some of the other rods, ASWB is in here. We normally sell hots, but I don't really have anything quite heavy enough in there. And likewise, Carpenter makes some lovely big rods too, really renowned. I have just received a couple of their heavy class rods, which are in packets over on the wall there. Which yeah. we might be able to fill. Yes, definitely. Really cool. We'll whip them out. Have you ever felt a carpenter? No, never. I've never, never filled any rod here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Obviously, this is some of the most high end fishing people do. They're all up there over a grand sort of thing, though. Or what's um, the price yeah, range? Yeah, sort of here? Aussie dollars around that 800 to anything 1300 odd dollars yep. so it kind of starts at high end and goes up from there okay starts yeah. at high end and goes up from there <laughs> <laughs> and lengthwise duncan what are we grabbing here are they all they all come in at about eight foot 
Yeah, about uh, eight foot, I think, is the longest one we've got here, yeah. and we'll go down to about seven foot nine. Cool. For bigger poppers, slightly shorter lengths are yeah. uh, the, the go. I said before, the, um, nice rule, three rods, four rods maybe to show people, and then I've gone and pulled out five rods just because that's what fitted, and that's what we happen to have. <laughs> what do you got? Starting there, we've got a Carpenter Monster Hunter. Yep. A second model of Carpenter Monster Hunter. Yep. FCL Labo 710 Extreme. Yep. ASWB Sword of Reaper. The Zenac Tabizo 8200. All right. So we kind of range from heavy to really heavy, powerful rods. Should cover us nicely. That's what we want. We'll just start from the left. So, Monster Hunter, famous rod for big fish. Capable of casting some really big lures, like well over 200 grams. Okay. No trouble at all. Where you might find this one is more challenging is actually the other end when you start trying to use smaller lures on it, because oh. it is built for big, big lures. <laughs> How I like to test the rods there is, yeah, you have your bottom hand on the rod, top hand, yeah. keep that arm nice and straight. Yeah and keep your back straight. As the fish, or me, is pulling yeah. that way, you're going down and leaning back, so your quads are taking as much of the load as possible. Okay. Once the fish starts tipping you over like that, then your lower back is trying to take all the load and that's what really screws you up. Okay. So the key to fishing with big rods is so to sit down. use the right technique and sit down. Yeah. The more it goes vertical, the easier yeah. it is to sit down on it. Yeah. Sometimes when the fish is running straight away from you, a little bit more challenging, you might even stick the rod up and, and your armpit yeah. and straight line it. But as I go down, so do you. Starting with that one again, we got moderately stiff to yeah. start off with. And then as we hit the midsection there, it just steadily ramps up all the way through on this rod. So there's not a, a massive lockup point, but it progressively yeah. just gets more and more powerful until you get down to about there then it hits there really it's, powerful. It's, yeah. Is that the heaviest stick there? No, this one is technically is a stronger rod. Yep. But it's not quite as stiff. We start off a little bit more supple in the tip. Yeah. And then folds away a bit more in the midsection. Yeah. And now go go crazy on it down low, pull as hard as you can. So this one is actually probably the most powerful out of the bunch for lifting, but it's not the stiffest at the tip. Okay. You're losing a little bit with your monster poppers, but you're gaining on fish fighting comfort. Okay. So we've moved on to, <laughs> onto an FCL. So physically lighter rods. Yes. Most of the FCLs are, are physically built lighter. Yeah, uh, they're compared to the carpenter, it's a little bit more crisp and snappy. Oh, okay. If you like the rods that have that real snappy, punchy kind of cast, yeah. then FCL's right up your alley. The taper on this one, again, we've got, it's not crazy stiff initially, but you start to feel it through here rapidly starting to, to ramp up. Yeah. This one, you can feel that moving big poppers is, is not a problem for it. And then it does fold through pretty well as well. Maybe it doesn't fold down quite as far as the last carpenter we loaded up. Yeah. But it's also a little bit crisper and snappier towards the tip. Cast weight of all of these is pretty similar. So far, everything we've done is sort of Max. 250 grams. 250 or, grams. Or even more, potentially. Yeah. Essentially, that means as big as you want to cast. As big as you want to cast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this one, the ASWB, says it rates up to 220 grams. Slightly lighter on the cast weight. Quite stiff and punchy from the get-go. Yeah. So that initial stiffness and then it starts to flex through into the midsection there and loads quite far down. Yeah. Starts off stiffer, but then flexes all the way through. Definitely punchy for working the poppers and then it kind of works on through to being a little bit easier on the body for lifting. Yeah. And it comes an arc. So what I like about the Zenac is, yeah. for me, it's closer to an all day rod. It's still at the heavy end, yeah. but it's more the kind of rod that I'd like to fish with all day long. Okay. Whereas some of the others, it's something that I'd fish with for a few hours and then yeah. I'd want to put it down and swap <laughs> to something else. We maybe sacrificed a little bit on, you know, absolute lure size and absolute lifting power yeah. for something that is a bit easier to use for long sessions. Not crazy stiff initially, yeah. then gradually stiffening up through yeah. the midsection there and just lean into it, give it heaps and lean back and try and high stick it as much as you like. Yeah, now you're starting to get... Get a load on. So there's still lots and lots down there. Yeah. 
and it's a nice easy rod to use. You just felt five rods on that? Yes. What did you feel? A little bit of pain. <laughs> a, little bit of pain. <laughs> a little bit of pain. Did anything but, pop out at you? As uh, you like the feeling in your hand or? Yes, because I'm not so much in GT fishing and more in the lighter fishing. Yep. I'm going for the lighter rods. You like the feel of them? Yes. Yep. Not the really, really heavy ones? Yep. Yes. I like really the FC Labo. Yeah. Yes. And the Zanac. <laughs> oh, that's good. Really good, because then we can just eliminate three. Eliminate straight away. The carpenter feels guys. very, very good. Yeah. But I don't know if I can handle this. <laughs> yeah. When you get a big fish on it and the rod can handle it, but you not yourself, then yep. a little bit lighter rods. I think I can handle the fish better. Yeah. It's a little bit shorter one. Which is the shorter? The FCL. It's shorter. more popper oriented. Yeah. This one I find maxes out around 180 gram for big poppers. Okay. And stick baits through to about 200, maybe even 230-ish grams. Mm -hmm. Whereas this one will do poppers to yeah. 200 plus and stick baits well over 200. Okay. When you get back the other way, sort of anything 120 grams and up on both of them, but certainly you feel more at ease when you do have a day of throwing 110, 120, 130 gram lures, this one is certainly tackles it really well. Do you plan on using your tuna stick for lighter days when you say, oh, I've had enough of throwing heavy, I want to throw some light lures. Do you plan on whipping out that other stick or do you want a rod that can do it all? Mm, I think I bring the ripple fisher with me. So you will bring it? I yeah. will bring it. Yeah. To a mount, for sure. I would definitely take it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mr. Satiga 5500. Oh, so I have a lighter setup. Yes, that yeah. I have done can switch. Put PA8 on it. Yes, I have yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> cool. PA8 yeah, and on the big one because on the, the 8000 8, Saltiga, yeah. I think you can't cast all day. It doesn't matter which rod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. And definitely, yeah. you know, you can only catch a fish if you've got a lure in the water. Yeah. Just restricting yourself to really heavy stuff and saying, no, I have to fish really heavy. If it means you're going to sit down and not cast for an hour every, because every you're too tired, yeah. <laughs> um, that could be the hour that you hook that one big fish. Exactly. Don't drop it. I dropped my very first dog fight. I was doing what you're doing. Yeah. Me and friend were together for some reason. And we dropped it on the ground. And it was the silkiest, smoothest thing in the universe. Then after the drop, it was like, just a oh. little bit, just slightly <laughs> screwed it. Whatever you choose, you're going to want to go and spend some time practicing with it. Yeah. So you just get used to it. Yeah, for get sure. Get feel for it. For sure. Even if you're just throwing big lures in a, in a car in a pond lake. somewhere. Yes. In um, Germany. <laughs> yeah. You just... Everybody will looking look at me strange, like, what yeah. are you doing? <laughs> Poppers like, um, I have the big jack fin or something. It's, I think this hooks you over 200 grams. Yeah. But it has it's, a smaller cup. Yeah, if it has a smaller cup, yeah. then you can, you know, expand your popper range. If okay. it has a really big cup, yeah. then you kind of go the other way because it's more about the resistance yeah. pulling it through the water. Okay. If you are trying to sweep a floating stick bait that's already difficult to use and you've got like a stiff stick, basically you have to be Ryota to be able to sweep it. I can't do it. But if I have like a nicer stick baiting rod and I'm trying to work my floating stick bait, it makes all the difference in the world for me anyway, because I'm not amazing at it. I don't know if you find the same thing, but... I naturally go towards stiffer rods in general yeah. as my do everything rods. Yeah. So I don't fish a lot of softer stick bait specific rods. Yeah. If I'm using say floating stick baits on a stiffer rod, use a lot more wrist action. So you're kind of doing yeah, a lot yeah. more of that. So you're a finesse master, tweaky tweaky basically. Yeah, but <laughs> at the end of the day, you end up pretty worn out in your forearms yeah. because you're doing that Some instead of just like, doing this. Yeah. There's definitely a benefit to it. You can use rod. the yeah, a super stiff rod to work delicate stick baits, it just takes a lot more effort. thought and precise effort. Yeah. If, if you're doing a lot of that floating stick baits, it's nice to have a stick, stick bait bait specific rod. rod. Yeah. You basically want a quiver of rods. Would you call it a quiver? A quiver? Yeah. Is it a quiver of rods? <laughs> I think it is. Yeah. Like in the best case scenario, you take this whole rack and go to a mom and Yeah, like, and you have a caddy, <laughs> someone who passes the, you the rods. Like, mm, I you're think like, you should throw this Yes, yeah, so I see this point coming up. Hand me the, <laughs> the P10. Is that going to be a thing? I think Brooksy might get that one day. He, he would do. hire someone. He might hire you, actually. Be careful. Well, <laughs> Million if, dollars a year. If the like. money's right, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to caddy. <laughs> All right, what are you feeling? You felt both there? Yeah, I think. I go with the Zanac. Oh, <laughs> you like it? Yeah, I like it. That's really cool. And I like it that it's uh, a little bit uh, longer. It's you like a little it a bit. bit more length? Yeah, yeah, just a touch more length. It's yes. Eight foot's a nice 
again all round sort of length for a variety of stuff yeah yeah and the electric grip yeah angular grip if you were looking at these rods online that little thing right there maybe it says maybe they say angular grip but you don't know until you actually feel it yeah. and go i love the feeling of that in yeah. my hand that's the rod i want what percentage of your choice is based <laughs> off the grip <laughs> 20. 20%? Yeah, yeah there you yeah, go. Yeah. So online, you would not have had that 20%. Never. No. And it makes a massive difference. He's just bent five of the eligible rods, narrowed it down to two, put his reel on each one, felt them, then whiff that rod for a minute, and he knows that he wants the Zanark. It's pretty cool to be able to go into a tackle shop and feel your rod before buying it. I actually feel quite sorry for, like, well, you said in Germany, there's no shop like this. Actually, in America, there's... Most of the world. Most of the world, there's not a shop like this. Which is why, the other way around, which is why we're an online business mostly, because this stuff is just not readily available everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's, a, it's a pretty niche thing. In Europe, we have a few old models left in a few shops. Oh, all right. There's no news no, at all. No. Wow. Don't get it. All right. Well, you thought your job was done, Duncan, but... He's actually have to repeat four rods yes. as well. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just done the exact same thing for his P3, P4 setup, which is he knows he's going for Spangled Emperor, other reef fish in Oman. So he knows even the place that he's going to be fishing for it. He knows the fish. He knows the exact reel, which is a 3,500 size Saltiga. Is that right? Yeah, Saltiga BJ. Saltiga BJ. And he's going to be running P3 or P4. So yes. we have five Rodneys. What do we got? So we'll start with a couple of ASWBs the Indian Pacific rods. That one's rated as P3, this one's rated as P5, but you know, there's plenty of leeway in between those two. Yep. So we've got an Ocean's Legacy, which is a new one, FCL Labo, and a Zenac again. Cool. So between those, we should be able to find something good. Yeah. So we'll start lighter on the P3. Nice and light in the hand, really easy to use. Wow, big flexi, flexi tip. Flexi tip. Big flexi tip. <laughs> this one may be a little bit under, as far as tip stiffness, yeah. what you want but we'll see. Uh, just lift on it, it's got heaps. Oh, okay. Yeah. For a little rod, there's a lot of yeah. power yeah. down the bottom, eh? Yeah. <laughs> and then straight away into the bigger brother. This one has quite a light tip for its size, which in this situation is probably a good thing because we've got the more powerful bottom end, ability to cast up to 100 grams, yeah. but you've still got that really light tip. When you do throw the smaller lures, you've still got that flexibility there. And then lift on it. Yeah, a lot of power. Yeah. That's going well beyond the P3, but you know, you don't have to use all the power that's there. Yes. It means later on you can ramp it up to something heavier on there Maybe. as well if you want to. Also, there's no saying that a 30 kilo GT doesn't need a lure this big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you might want to handle that. Ocean's Legacy. More of a classic stick baby style. Yeah. of rod. Doesn't ramp up as fast, but has that nice progressive, slightly softer tip. Yeah. And then plenty of power on it. Yeah. Nice light long casting rod. Then we've got an FCL. A bit too heavy for what we're looking for, yeah. but I figured we'd bend it anyway so you can see what the top end of this kind of range is. Okay. So this is rated as a P4 to 5. Mm -hmm. Cast 60 grams to 100 grams. Okay. We're at the heavy end of the spectrum for this. This one is also stiffer yeah because it'll work 80 gram poppers a lot of the rods in this range are more oriented to stick baits okay. and the, a lot of the poppers aren't don't have very big cup faces so yeah. you can get away with a lot once you start hitting 80 90 grams you get some bigger cup face poppers as well mm -hmm. and that's where this one really shines probably a bit underdone to fish the p3 on it but if you did choose to go the p4 then this is right in the, the zone And it feels like a mini GT rod yeah. to, to fish with. Yeah. And last but not least, we're back to Zenac again. And we've gone back to an eight foot rod. Yeah. Classic longer casting length. Much uh, guides. <laughs> yeah, the RG guide system has a lot more guides than normal. Yeah. It has a smaller stripper guide. The concept is to choke the line at the stripper guide first. Oh and then you get less line slap and less uh, casting okay. tangles further down the rod. So, so for tangles or for casting distance? A bit of both. Yeah. It definitely helps with casting knots or wind knots. Yeah. It does give you a bit extra casting distance and definitely I think when you've got crosswinds gives you better accuracy. Also having more contact points down the rod is more efficient when you're working lures or fighting a fish. Yeah. Because the line is following the path of the rod more. Yeah. Uh, rather than taking 
little uh, shortcuts yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So when you lift the rod, if you lift the rod tip, you know, a meter, you're retrieving more line each time. Right. That's interesting. Because yeah. it, it has it, more it, of a it curve. It helps if you draw it. There's more of a curve. No, I yeah, get it. You know, I if, get you, it. if you wind a weight to the tip of your rod yeah. and start lifting, because the rod follows a path and the line follows little yeah. short straight lines, you always give some line out as you lift up. Right. So the more the line follows the path of that rod, the less you give back. That's super interesting. So say on yeah. maybe a <laughs> standard setup, yeah. if you lifted from there to here, you might have moved the rod tip a meter, but you've only gained 80 centimeters of line. Right. Whereas on this one, potentially you've gained 90 centimeters of line. Yeah. So just that little bit more efficient all the way. Really cool. This has got the classic lighter tip again, yeah. and then loads through. There's a really nice P3 to four kind of action on it. Yeah. And there's a next model up a slightly heavier version of that as well. Okay. Which goes to 100 gram cast weights also. You just felt five rods, mate. What do you reckon? Yeah. Again. Again. <laughs> Straight up. Like not even any. No two. No two. Straight on. Yeah. Is it the yeah. handle? It's the handle. It's the handle a little it's, bit. <laughs> <laughs> that one is an absolute cracker of a rod. It sounds yeah. like a good one. And for the kind of fishing that you're talking about, Perfect. you know, it's basically that's what it's built for. Yeah. It's yeah. I like the FTL too, but it's a little bit, um, I think. One Original. model under, then it's better. Yeah. The FCL is a little bit more of a blue water rod yeah. or big reef fish, trying yeah. to pull big things out of coral. Whereas that is a bit more all-rounder, will handle a range of, of fish. Anything out to mid-sized tunas and trevallies in open water to yeah. all of the reef fish in close. Yes. Really awesome good all-round. I like it. Yeah. Awesome. Easy. And it is again. Uh, again, the, the, yeah, the grip. <laughs> it's really, really good. Because you have here with your fingers, it goes in and you thump on top. Yeah. And it's can Just turn it. It's locked. Yeah. It's locked. It's locked. It's locked. All right. Really good grip. You're done, mate. That's actually how you choose rods. You narrow it down based off the fish you want to catch, the lures you want to throw, work out what line you're going to be using. Hopefully, you know what reel. But. You can also reverse engineer what reel you should be using, using the same technique. Reverse engineer it, start from the fish, work your way back. If you can, go into an awesome shop like this and feel a bunch of rods. That makes a huge difference. Actually getting your hands on the rod. He felt five rods each time, narrowed it down the first time to two, and then chose the Zanak. Second time, didn't even need to narrow it down to two, straight to the Zanak. He loves the feeling of them, that's his rod. I might have chosen a different one. I might have chose the FCL. In the end, it comes down to what feels best for you, and he loves them. It's the nut. Anyone in the area that's in Queensland zone or wants to go for a bit of a drive to Queensland near the Goldie, you can come in and you can talk to Duncan and you can feel rods with him. But if you still want to get some advice on a rod, hit Duncan up. You can send him an email, say, hey man, I want to go for tuna. I'm looking at something P6. What have you got? What do you recommend? And he will do basically what we just did then, but over an email, chat, Facebook as well. You people write to you on Facey. Yeah. All so types of All types of ways. However you can get hold of Duncan, he's willing to help and he knows everything. So definitely hit him up. That's it. Thanks heaps, fellas. Excellent, mate. Thanks. Frothing. What's going on? L look what the bloody Yemen just dragged in, mate. Hey, what? <laughs> New camera. Oh, old camera, but only comes out when I don't go fishing. Big lens, eye. Uh, big lens. What's going on? Um, How is that lens? It's a good lens. It's big. That's proper vlogging. Yeah, look whoa. At that. Um, I feel a bit intimidated looking at that thing. David here has come all the way from Germany. He's coming, oh, really? coming to <laughs> oh, Oman. Good. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, sick. And nice to meet you, man. He's nice on a holiday you. with his missus. But they stopped in for a big buy Omani GT rod. What are you getting as an act? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What did I say? Who's going to say? No, I just said Brooks is going to try and sell them bloody. What are you going to buy? What are you looking at? Oh, we don't know. We've got a few selection over there, mate. Five rods. Yeah, five rods. <laughs> I've broken my own rule already. Oh, uh, it's not four. Duh. It's three rods. It's probably on the five. Rods. Yeah. Um, what are you here for? I've got to drop off some rods. Going to Japan in like, when are we going? Two weeks. Two weeks. All oh, right. Big trade yeah. show, mate. Oh, you know? it's an yeah. What's this? <laughs> no, no, no. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, the money coming out of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Taking oh, the misses wow. as well, so big money coming out. You just got a million views on TikTok. Yeah, that doesn't give you any money. Are you shaking? <laughs> are you all right? Can you hold it for me? Oh my god! I nearly. Nah, that's. <laughs> um, it's heavy. Yeah. Scary. Big Jack for Brooksy last night out the back of his house. Another one. So now you've broken yourself in. You've got a dog. Yeah, bro. okay. Big. Oh, yeah. 
Big, oh? big hold out. What do you mean? <laughs> Look at the eyes on it. That's 40. You got crazy eyes on it. Um, yeah, it's <coughs> Yeah, right. It's good. It's all right, I fully interrupted. No, 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 that's all right. Hey, do you guys want to do whatever you got to do with Brooksy real quick? What do you um, got to do? I just got to drop off these junior rods and yep. I've got to get this one 